Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 8th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary actually from yesterday from Didi about converting different representations of IP addresses, uh, something scammers like to do, in particular in uh, spam and such, in order uh, to obfuscate the actual address a user is connecting to. Well, IPv4 addresses can be represented many different ways and browsers are quite forgiving in what users may enter. There's octal, there's just the uh, long integer form, and then of course host names in various variations. So Didier is showing how to deobfuscate some of these representations in CyberChef. And Microsoft announced that it made the uh, preview for Azure Active Directory authentication with a certificate, so certificate-based authentication available to uh, pretty much everybody at this point. So if you're using uh, Azure Active Directory, give it a try, see how it works for you. Essentially, it uses a certificate stored on a YubiKey as your credential, and uh, then you can authenticate using your mobile device. This is supposed to support iOS as well as Android on the mobile end and uh, is supposed to be phishing resistant, which means uh, that uh, the machine, uh, the mobile phone here likely, decides uh, how to authenticate based on certificates presented uh, by the site. So uh, this way the user doesn't really have an option uh, to enter their credentials into the wrong site. Not all two-factor authentication is necessarily phishing resistant, like for example, these one-time password codes like Google Authenticator, the user may still enter in the wrong site. And then of course, someone may sort of proxy them and uh, still essentially be able to log in to a website. And sudden changes and uncertainty often does allow for some opening for scammers. And the latest victim here, of course, is Twitter and its users. With all of the changes at Twitter recently, there's a lot of confusion among users, uh, how verification, all of that is going to work. So as a result, there is a new influx of scams that try to profit from uh, this confusion. I'll link to an article from Sophos that describes some of these email scams, but there are numerous articles out there describing them. Well, um, as always, be careful uh, what you click on. And of course, don't provide your credentials to any site that's not Twitter, which sort of goes back to the phishing resistance of credentials. And of course, in particular, if your account is more valuable, meaning it is like a verified account or such, then it's often even a greater target for any scam like this. And we got another uh, social media related uh, story. Facebook uh, maybe in May released a feature that allows you uh, to delete your phone number from Facebook's database if it was inadvertently uploaded by one of your friends. This feature was released but was never announced and uh, just sort of the last week it was really sort of found and discussed by the trade press. The problem this is trying to solve is that Facebook has or had a feature that allowed users to sync their address book with a Facebook in order uh, to make it easier uh, to find friends, also uh, to import information from Facebook about those friends into your address book. But of course, as part of this, uh, phone numbers of uh, friends were uploaded to Facebook without necessarily the consent of the people who use that phone number and in part to undo this, they now introduce this new feature. Looks like it's sort of working. Of course, hard to tell if the data is actually being deleted. And one thing I have been saying and lots of other people have been saying that uh, with uh, modern uh, websites, email systems and operating systems, uh, for the most part, the threat of uh, Wi-Fi networks uh, has been a little bit overhyped in the sense that, well, you're using TLS for everything anyway, and it's usually reasonably well configured uh, TLS. 
Well, I may have to rethink that. The RSA conference now published some stats from its conference in February, and it uh, turns out that they actually discovered quite a bit of leaked sensitive data. They state that they captured 55,000 clear text passwords from about 2,000 unique accounts, and even in at least one case had a CEO who did use totally unencrypted email due to a misconfigured email client. Now, this really shouldn't happen. Like the server shouldn't really allow unencrypted connections, but uh, apparently it did happen. So maybe VPNs are still a good idea, or maybe you just should stay away from any kind of public Wi-Fi network. But then of course, uh, LTE and networks like that are necessarily that bulletproof either. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.